While radiologists are likely familiar with breast and ovarian cancer syndromes associated with BRCA1 and BRCA2 germline mutations, it is now recognized that hereditary cancer syndromes as a whole account for 5 to 10 percent of all cancers. In this article from authors at four different U.S. academic centers, the authors remind us that imaging plays a central role in the screening, diagnosis, and surveillance of affected patients. The paper begins with a review of the role of specific imaging modalities in this population, with a focus on ultrasound and whole body MRI, as many of the affected patients are young and will require repeated prolonged screening. A coronal stir sequence represents the core MR sequence used. Table 4 summarizes a typical whole body MRI protocol that can be utilized. The review of specific syndromes begins with BRCA associated hereditary breast and ovarian cancer, which accounts for 5 to 10% of all breast cancers. Triple negative invasive ductal carcinoma is the most common type in BRCA1 carriers. Table 3 shows the American Cancer Society screening guidelines in patients with BRCA mutations. Cowden syndrome, known as multiple hamartoma syndrome, is a germline mutation in the PTEN suppressor gene and is characterized by multiple hamartomas in different organs, as well as breast, thyroid, colon, brain, and endometrial cancers. Lee Fraumani syndrome, or LFS, caused by TP53 gene mutation, is associated with multiple pediatric and adult malignancies, with sarcomas and breast cancers most common. Adrenal cortical carcinoma in pediatric patients is considered a hallmark feature of LFS. Since patients with LFS are at significantly greater risk for radiation-induced malignancies, PET MRI has benefits in screening young patients with LFS. Von Hippel-Lindau disease results from mutations in the VHL gene and is well known for its association with CNS hemangioblastoma and renal cell carcinoma, with MRI the modality of choice for the diagnosis of CNS lesions. Berthog Dubé is well known to thoracic radiologists and dermatologists due to the associated cystic lung lesions and cutaneous manifestations, respectively. Less well recognized is the 23 to 34 percent incidence of renal oncocytomas and renal cell carcinomas. Tuberous sclerosis or Bourneville disease is due to mutations of the TSC1 or TSC2 gene that encodes for proteins tuberin and hamartin, respectively. Characteristic brain lesions include cortical tubers, subependymal nodules, giant cell astrocytoma, and dysplastic white matter lesions. Multiple renal angiomyolipomas are seen in 80% of patients. The multiple endocrine neoplasia, or MEN type 1 syndrome, is characterized clinically by the three Ps, tumors of the parathyroid, pancreatic slash duodenal, and pituitary glands. Pancreatic tumors are typically gastrinomas with secondary development of the Zollinger-Ellison syndrome. The authors point out that gallium-68 dotatate PET-CT is more sensitive than octreotide for the detection of neuroendocrine tumors and should be considered for radiologic surveillance in patients with MEN1. MEN2 is divided into three types that are reviewed in the paper. Medullary thyroid cancer is common to all three. Following a review of hereditary paraganglioma pheochromocytoma syndrome associated with mutations in genes encoding for succinyl dehydrogenase enzymes, the authors review Lynch syndrome or hereditary non-polyposis colorectal cancer, which for readers is the topic of a March 2018 radiographics article by Veronica Cox and colleagues from MD Anderson Cancer Center. Familial adenomatous polyposis 
and hereditary gastric cancer syndrome are the final two entities discussed. Figure 30 shows a dramatic example of the latter as depicted on CT.